Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, the sky's the limit as we dive into the design, history, and heritage of bomber and flight jackets. Bomber and flight jackets are an essential part of the casual wardrobe. And like many men's classic garments, they were designed as functional workwear for members of the military. It can be a tricky item to get right. After all, you want to look more top gun and less top pun. Yes, sir. That is all. In today's video, we'll explore these classic pieces of outerwear, talk about how you should wear them, and even give you some advice on where to buy them. First things first, let's get these terms defined. I don't want to go through this whole video and confuse everyone. Bomber jacket or flight jacket. What's the difference? Bomber jackets are often called flight jackets, flight jackets, bomber jackets. And the question is, is this right? Well, they both are. Flight jacket and a bomber jacket will maintain many of the same characteristics. So use the term that you want. Technically, a flight jacket is any jacket that has aviation roots, whereas a bomber jacket was a name that was given to jackets after World War II and the name has stuck. Also note that there's another style of jacket that closely resembles the bomber or flight jacket, and that would be the letterman or varsity jacket. Really, the only distinction here is the bright collegiate or university colors that are on a varsity or letterman's jacket, not to mention patches. Coming back to bomber jackets, they were originally intended and designed to keep airmen warm in cold temperatures. And many bomber jackets today maintain those similar features. Traditional bomber jackets are typically made from leather, sheepskin, or fabric. The jacket is cut to the waist, so that way a pilot or airman can move around an airplane a lot easier. They'll also feature a zipper or buttons to close it. Maybe they'll have external pockets and they'll have elastic around the cuffs and the hem. Now that we have an understanding of bomber jackets, let's grab our aviation goggles and let's look back at the history. So in the early days of motorized transport, airplanes did not have closed cockpits, which left the pilot at the will of the elements. Like I know that convertibles are, are nice and all, but driving one in Minnesota, no way. If we look at cars in the exact same time period, they were also open and exposed. And oftentimes drivers of cars would wear long furry overcoats to keep them warm from the elements as well. But if you think about aircraft, those coats were too long for flying. The cockpit of the plane was cramped and oftentimes the pilot had to enter and exit vertically. There weren't doors like on a car. After all, no one wants to be grounded prematurely by tripping over a long coat. So at the time, flight jackets were cut a lot shorter than car coats. Also being up in the clouds meant that flight jackets had to be weather resistant. And at the time of World War I, a lot of the performance materials of the day were natural materials. So flight jackets were constructed of sheepskin and tough pieces of leather. And if you're a film fan, you might have seen flight jackets of this era pop up in the 2021 film, The Kingsman. This was a prequel to the other installments of the Kingsman series, and this happened right around the time of World War I. One of the characters, the Duke of Oxford, wears a jacket that's inspired by a lot of the jackets of that time period. Replicas were then made available and were sold by Mr. Porter. Now, after World War I, great advances were made in aviation. Planes could climb to even higher altitudes, exposing pilots to temperatures as low as negative 50 degrees Celsius. And that wasn't really comfortable in unheated, unpressurized cabins of aircraft. Over the coming years, many different iterations and designs of the flight jacket were made. American aviator and businessman Leslie Irvin created the first sheepskin flight jacket for extreme conditions at high altitudes. These became known as B jackets and were typically made of sheepskin. A jacket models were constructed from leather that was lined with wool, cotton, or silk. The model type A1 was the first of a famous line of bomber jackets and was introduced between 1927 and 1931. This was the first jacket to feature a knitted wool waistband and cuffs, setting the design standard for flight jackets going forward. The A1 also featured two flat cargo pockets, a heavy cotton lining, and horn buttons. It also had a cape skin exterior. Later on, the military eventually abandoned cape skin, which is a type of sheepskin, as it was just not durable enough. The Model A2 bomber jacket was introduced in 1931. It was produced and manufactured by various companies up until 1943. And because of so many different manufacturers, different materials were used. But in general, the Type A2 was constructed of horse hide leather, which was much more hard wearing than cape skin, and they were lined with silk. The sturdy snaps and reinforced pockets were still there for use inside of a cockpit. The A2's collar could be closed completely for more warmth, and the pockets were more slim, which is perfect for an airplane. Meanwhile, in the 1930s, the Model B3 was also being developed. This leather jacket featured a wide sheepskin collar with two leather straps that could be fastened tightly around the neck for extra warmth. 
This model, like its A-letter cousins, were used frequently in the 1930s and 40s. Once airplanes consistently had closed cockpits, the jackets didn't need to be as bulky, so the model B6 was made. It featured a slimmer cut, a single leather throat latch, and it had slashed pockets. As aircraft continued to evolve into the Second World War, planes began to carry crew members that were not the pilot or the navigator. That means more and more members of the military that needed to be outfitted for the war in the skies. With so many members joining the air forces over the skies of Europe and the South Pacific on bombing runs, this is where the name Bomber Jacket came from. In 1943, the military introduced the model B-10 as a replacement for the other jacket models. This was the first jacket designed with a fabric shell and an alpaca lining. It was intended to be a lighter weight, less bulky, and more versatile than its predecessors. Although it was only useful for temperatures ranging between 25 and 55 degrees, the slim design became a favorite. It became so popular that many non-flying generals decided to incorporate it into their uniform. However, the owners of A2 flight jackets were the elite air crew among military personnel, and they frequently decorated their jackets with artwork and embroidery detailing their combat exploits. The high status surrounding the A2 carried over from the military into civilian life. And this jacket remains one of the two most famous and most iconic jacket designs to this day. The other famous model is the G1. The Model G1 is now the colloquial term for many variations on a leather flight jacket with or without a fur collar. Now, despite its popularity among generals and other members of the military, the B-10 was traded out for the B-15 in 1944. But this jacket's heyday was also short-lived. And it wasn't long until the military shifted once again to lighter weight models during the jet age, the MA-1 and MA-2. These jackets also featured the knitted cuffs and waistband and typically came in either a navy or green shell with a bright orange lining. Obviously, this also had a functional purpose as the jackets could be turned inside out to be used as a distress signal for downed pilots. The MA-1 had a knitted collar while the MA-2 had a turned down style collar. And the look of the MA-1 closely inspires a lot of modern day bomber jackets. As bomber jackets continue to evolve and iterate, there's no denying that the style is still popular today. Of course, there have been many different modern interpretations of the bomber jacket. You can find them in many different materials, such as cotton, polyester, linen, wool, the list goes on and on. But there's no denying the timeless appeal. So as history has shown, many different bomber jacket styles come and go, but there are some things that remain consistent. The bomber jacket is a piece of Americana, and it is very prevalent on the silver screen. Not to mention the bomber jacket can be quite character defining. So here are a few of our favorites. The first would be Indiana Jones's bomber jacket. Incorporating many classic menswear elements into the character design, Indiana Jones's famous brown leather jacket is based on the A2 model. This jacket was created for the 1981 film Raiders of the Lost Ark and features adjusters on the side for comfort. The jacket was created for the film by Wested Leathers in Kent, England. And this jacket can still be purchased from the original makers today. Next up are the bomber jackets worn in Top Gun, specifically Mavericks. Perhaps one of the most famous bomber jackets in the history of cinema, Tom Cruise's character Pete Maverick Mitchell sports an iconic leather G1 model in the 1986 film Top Gun. Decorated with various military patches and insignia, this particular jacket was crafted with authenticity in mind. The G1 jacket was the standard issue jacket for naval aviators during this film's timeline. Boasting details such as a dark brown collar and a bi swing back for added mobility, this jacket is a perfect representation of the military's need for functional garments. The next one is the bomber jackets in Batman. While Jack Nicholson wore suits tailored by Tommy Nutter on Savile Row for his portrayal of the Joker in 1989's Batman, his henchmen were decked out in bomber jackets. They wore black outfits topped with leather bombers that were a hybrid between the B-10 and G-1 models, and these jackets were instantly recognizable in the Joker's signature purple. And similar to the Top Gun bombers, these were covered with patches. However, instead of military insignia, these were covered with the Joker's logo and sets of playing cards. Next up is the movie Drive and Ryan Gosling's bomber jacket. Riffing off of lighter bomber jacket models, Ryan Gosling wears a satin one in the 2011 film Drive. With angled slash pockets at the waist and high contrast detailing, this particular jacket carries a particular aura of confidence and individuality. And of course, we have to mention the iconic scorpion embroidery on the back of the jacket. This particular feature was inspired by the so-called souvenir jackets that GIs brought home from Japan after World War II. And Gosling himself wanted the scorpion to feature a symbol of protection. So we looked at a number of bomber jacket models and their place within history. So now we have to ask, how do they fit? With their elasticized cuffs and hems, unfortunately, they've fallen into a trend of recent years with being oversized. Needless to say, this isn't something that you should be looking for as it'll make it look more like a trend piece. 
Instead, you should look for something that fits close with some room for mobility. This means picking a jacket with a higher armhole, like in a good suit jacket. Paying attention to this area will allow you to raise and lower your arms comfortably. Even though the jacket features elastic at the cuffs and the hem, this shouldn't be pulled completely tight when you're wearing it. This elastic should hug you comfortably and allow movement. If it's too tight, it won't be comfortable, and if it's all stretched out, it won't help you stay warm. In order to get the correct body length, you want the jacket to fall at your hips. Remember, this jacket evolved from longer jackets into a much shorter jacket, so it wouldn't be a hassle while flying. So ideally, you want your jacket to hit at this height. Just below it's okay, but the jacket shouldn't cover your seat. On the flip side, there should be a seal between the bottom of the jacket and the waistband of your trousers. Please, no crop tops here. Now, a bomber jacket sleeve length can be a little bit trickier as this is one of the few pieces of outerwear which will have an elastic cuff. So, to get things right, treat this jacket just like you would a suit jacket. Essentially, the bomber jacket's cuff should end roughly at the root of your thumb for a comfortable fit. It's okay for the main body of the sleeves to overlap the elastic cuff a little, but it shouldn't eclipse the cuff completely. That's a sign that the jacket sleeve is too long. So, when it comes to wearing a bomber jacket, you'll want to pick a plain, unadorned one for the most classic look. Whether you go for leather, fabric, or suede, picking something in a brown, blue, or green color is timeless. Bomber jackets also come in black, but they tend to look a little bit odd since black is such a formal color. The easiest way to incorporate a bomber jacket into a casual wardrobe is to realize that casual clothing is key. So a t-shirt or a casual shirt or a casual sweater is always best as the base layer. Add on a nice quality pair of denim jeans and a pair of sturdy boots and you're set. This look is a great way to incorporate classic but casual elements in your wardrobe. But also remember that leather bomber jackets tend to look more dressed up than fabric ones. Also, don't wear a bomber jacket over another jacket like a sport coat. Not only is this a complete clash of formality, but you'll add just way too much bulk to your outfit. So if you need extra warmth, go for knitwear. We find that if a t-shirt is a little bit too cold, adding in some knitwear is perfect. And in the depth of winter, add in a chunky knit sweater like I'm wearing today. Now, you can increase the formality of a bomber jacket by adding in button-down shirts like an OCBD or a flannel shirt. These are inherently more relaxed than the typical dress shirt, which blends the formality scale very well. To elevate the look, I would recommend trying to keep your shirt tucked in. If you're going to untuck it, don't really let it fall underneath the bomber jacket because that can look sloppy. Overall, it's best to tuck your shirt in. For trouser options outside of denim, you can go with things such as chinos, corduroys, or flannels. Don't go for any super formal fabric, such as suit separates or super fine worsted wools, as there will be a clash of formality. Worsted wool is best for more formal outfits. Linen belongs in the summer, so you'll be wearing a fall top with a summer bottom, and that'll just look off. When it comes to footwear, stick with canvas or leather options. So work boots or brogues are a great option, as are canvas or leather sneakers. Steer clear of most athletic sneakers, as they are not a part of classic style. Also, avoid the black cap toe oxfords. Again, the clash and formality will be way too strong. For leather footwear, you can enjoy some more unique materials such as hatch grain, pebble grain, or cordovan. These look great with a lot of casual elements, especially in various shades of brown. So how do I buy a bomber jacket, you might ask? Well, you could find a vintage model, but those can fetch several thousands of dollars. Plus, the sizing isn't the same that it is today, so it might be a challenge. But if you're happy to put in the work, you can go to places like eBay, or you can shop vintage in person, in which case Preston and Raphael here have many tips. Of course, there are many options for bomber jackets on the high street, but keep in mind that many of them are just going to be fashion elements. Instead, you should go for what would be considered reproduction bomber jackets. By this, we mean taking the design of a older bomber jacket with modern build quality and materials. They'll be brand new and they'll break in and patina with you, meaning that you'll have a piece that will evolve with you. Eastman Leather, Cockpit USA, and US Wings offer a range of various leather models, with US Wings also offering nylon flight jackets. In addition, Alpha Industries also offers many good models, and they were the original producers of the Top Gun jacket. Also, consider Wested Leather, as they made the originals for Indiana Jones. A couple others that I like on the higher end of the spectrum would be the Real McCoy, or also Private White has a really nice flight jacket with a shearling collar. So as we touch down on our journey through the sartorial skies, it's plain to see that leather jackets have been soaring in popularity. So whether you wear your bomber jackets with a modern style or with a vintage aesthetic, we would love to hear more on how you wear them down in the comments below. 
In today's video, I'm wearing a leather jacket in a brown shade of suede. It's in a flight style and from a maker called The Jacket Maker. The Jacket Maker sent over some jackets to our team, but this video is 100% not sponsored. You can see that it features two flap pockets right on the hips and it has a button closure. I love this suede jacket because I really love suede as a material and it works really well with the casual nature of what I like to wear. Underneath, I have a chunky gray sweater in a commando style, very similar to what James Bond would wear. This is from LL Bean. My jeans are a pair of Selvage jeans from Brave Star. I'm wearing a pair of the brass boots from Grant Stone. These are in a waxy brown commander leather. My socks are a Fort Belvedere prototype. They're in this really cool red like diamond pattern. And since we're talking about pieces of aviation history, I'm wearing a Cartier Santos on my wrist. This was sent over from our friends over at Delray Watch. Again, they're not a sponsor of our channel, but they send us watches and we always say thank you. If you wanna get any Fort Belvedere products, you can check out the link to the shop here. Oh. 